I'm John Crawford. I am your former insurance commissioner. I say your because it was you good Republicans that have elected me to be the first and only insurance commissioner since statehood. Now, being here tonight is, is kind of nice because my mother was born here. My grandfather is buried over here. And as a kid, I used to come to McAllister Lake and crappie fish. So I have great feelings and love to go to crabs. The food is terrific, as you can tell. <laughs> when I took office as insurance commissioner, I learned very quickly that it probably was the best kept secret in state government. People did not realize that they had a place to go if they had an insurance problem. And I started with an open door policy. In fact, very dramatically, we took the doors off of the office so the people would know we're there. Well, that didn't really work either as much as I wanted it to. So we started town hall meetings. And we would go around the state with two or three of the employees, see if people had insurance problems, see if we could help them. Well, to save time and money, when we could fly, we would fly. That way we were back within a day. And the governor sometimes would let me borrow his airplane. Not always, but occasionally. But we were scheduled to come to McAllister. Got all ready, got all packed. And they said, Commissioner, the flight has been canceled. I said, what's the matter? I said, Gene Stark won't give you permission to land. There's no Republican runway. Well, wow. <laughs> I'm glad it looks like you all have a Republican runway in McAllister. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I think there's probably been more focus on the insurance commissioner's race than I can ever remember. A lot of it is because of the concern for Obamacare. Now, if you've been led to believe the insurance commissioner can do anything about it, you're wrong. Because one has to follow the law. And I'm very emotional and intense about following the law. But the good news is that 90%, we figure, of Oklahomans will want to vote to opt out. And that is on the ballot in November. Now, with the opt out, I think it's pretty easy, more easily, to remove the current commissioner, who is the sitting commissioner and incumbent, and I've been there, from office because she and Kathleen, you know who Kathleen Stabilius is, if you're a senior, you get stuff from her all the time, and she's in constant contact with Obama. He doesn't like us because we're the reddest state in the union. He wants his thumb on our pulse. But I, but I think Tim Holland will be removed, and I, I think I can comfortably do it because I'm the one that, when I took office, that brought the insurance department into the 21st century. When I took office, agents were taking the exam with a number two pencil and waited days to figure out what their score was. I automated that. They finished, they pushed the button, and they knew where they passed or failed. And we continued to develop the insurance department in the same manner. Now, being a Republican in a Democratic-controlled Senate, you don't always get what you want. But we have to store and file, and I'll get to this in a minute, these huge amounts of financial statements. Each insurance company every year files this great big old statement, and you have to keep them for years. Well, the people who gave me my office space decided they will give me more office space. So we, we had all this stuff stacking up. So we started putting these on microfilm. And we were the only agency to do that. What well, used to take a room we could put in a shoebox. But we didn't do and in inventing things all of the time. Now, with the removal of the current commissioner, this is where this race becomes important. You have an insurance department to run. And this department is the lowest ranking one on the ballot. But remember this. It collects, with the new tax on claims, it will probably collect a half a billion dollars in taxes, licenses, and fees every year. It licenses like 40,000 agents. It regulates even bail bondsmen, real estate appraisers. It's a, it has a mammoth amount of responsibility. But the most important thing, if you go home with this tonight, there's nothing else, remember this. The insurance commissioner regulates 1,500 plus insurance companies. And the assets of these companies constitute most of the wealth of the United States. You know why? It's your money. They have to set it aside in reserves to pay your claim when you have it under your policy. And the number one job of the commissioner is to ensure the financial stability of each and every one of these companies, that you will be paid. Remember AIG, the biggest company that could not fail? We're not going to have that in Oklahoma. Now, let me tell you about John Crawford. I'm an actuary. You know what an actuary is? Anybody know what an actuary is? 
my little, my little daughter, when she was growing up, they said, what did your daddy do? He said, he's a consulting actuary. They said, what's that? He said, he's an insurance computer. Well, that was her definition. But as an actuary, let me, let me do a comparison for you between an agent and an actuary. An agent sits across your table and tries to sell you a product, whether it be life, accident, health, policy, whatever it is. Those policies are made up by actuaries. We write the contract. We establish the rates. We tell them what commissions to pay. We tell them what the benefits are going to be. We establish reserves, and then at the end of the year, we certify that they, those companies are actuarially sound. I, that's what my job is, and I've done it. At age 25, when I start, first started with the Oklahoma Church Department, I was the youngest actuary in the United States. Hmm. I left the department, had my own actuarial practice. We had companies from New Jersey to Arizona. In the, 70s, the 90s, I didn't like what was going on because once upon a time, Oklahoma had over 100 domestic, that's companies within the state, in little towns, who hire people, who make investments, who makes loans. And being small, the church commissioner then didn't want to help them. In other words, he'd rather put them out of business. It's easier, you know, to kill something than to build it. So we dwindled back to 10 companies under that administration. And that was the reason primarily that I ran, because we need companies in Oklahoma. We need them desperately even more today. Because you are paying the highest property and casualty rates in the United States.